What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another video for you guys. And today we're going to be looking at the stars of the European Championship. So we're going to have a look at who we could you know, potentially sign this summer. I know we don't have a manager yet and it might be irrelevant right now, but uh, we're going to look at a few people that have caught our eye uh, during the championship so far and who could be a potentially viable target and realistic target. So um, we've seen a few players that have caught our eye, haven't they? Definitely. It's been a good tournament. I've really enjoyed the Euros so far and there's been a number of players who are definitely realistic um, um, targets for a club like Tottenham who we should definitely be looking at a, re a realistic target. So I've definitely been keeping an eye on players we can definitely uh, look out for and I'm sure you guys uh, in the comments definitely have as well. So I'm looking forward to this video. Um, all right, so we've earmarked 11 players and the first player we're going to be talking about is Domenico Berardi of Sassuolo. Right winger, his market value, the market values are all going on the website Transfer Market. So we've just taken it from there and the market value for Berardi is 31 and a half million. Yeah, and he's been um, starting on the right hand side, uh, much to a bit of a surprise, I think, from a lot of the people in Italy that he's starting every game because, you know, they've got players like Bernadeschi there not playing and um, I, you know, you would have thought maybe he would have got a start but he's been pretty good and uh, he got an assist on the first game and I think Italy have been definitely one of the stronger teams and uh, he's uh, been very very lively for them and uh, keeping Chiesa Fernando Chiesa from uh, Juventus out of the team as well so he's definitely been one to impress so far on that right hand side yeah he looks like a tricky customer a direct customer and I think um, he's one uh, that could definitely be gettable seeing how he's at Sassuolo um, I said the the market value is 31 and a half million do you think he'll go for that much uh, you would like to think maybe you can get him down to like 25, but, um, you know, with his performances, his value only seems to be going up. So His contract ends in 2024. So, so he's, he's still three got years, quite a while. Three left. years yeah. left. So it's not like um, his contract's running out anytime soon. All right. Well, let me know your thoughts on Domenico Berardi, obviously one of the stars of the... Um, the learning of Lou Benevente. Exactly. Those, that's uh, exactly what I'm going. Berardi, Berardi, mm. Milan. Uh, definitely going... Um, definitely one of the stars of the Euros so far as well. Italy definitely one of the teams of the Euros so far. Uh, next up, we're going to be looking at Roman Yaremchuk. Mm. Um, that pronunciation I've learned from you. Um, <laughs> obviously, he plays for Ghent as a striker. I uh, thought he's been really good at the Euros so far, barring the last game I thought uh, it was a poor showing from him but 13 and a half million market value and um, his contract's actually longer, four years, 2025. Yeah, he seems like a striker who definitely needs um, service. You saw in that last game against, um, when they lost, I can't Austria. remember, against Austria, he didn't really get any service at all and he kind of struggled. But even then, there was a couple of moments he had a nice got a bit of turn of pace and um, caused a bit of trouble. But you saw against Holland and against... Um, in Macedonia, he gave those uh, centre backs proper, proper trouble throughout the game, and he seems like not only is a big, tall, physical striker, but he does seem to have a bit of mobility about him as well. So he's definitely one that maybe, as a backup striker, uh, as a cheap option, you might look at as someone who could do a job for us in the Premier League. Yeah, definitely. I think he's got de he's definitely got something about him. I think he's a good age at like what twenty four, twenty five yeah, right now. Yeah, twenty five. I think he is. Um, he's a big lad, and and. And, you know, for someone that big, I think, like you said, he's got mobility about him. He's got a bit of speed and I think he's quite good on the ball as well. So um, I definitely think he would be one. I wouldn't sign him if we were to sell Kane as like our first choice, but as a backup. Yeah, and he's obviously got two goals of the Euros. A nice header against um, Holland and a really composed front front um, post finish against Macedonia as well. So it showed two different finished abilities to finish. Yeah. Now, next up, we're going to look at Roma's Leonardo Spinazzola, another Italian uh, doing wonders at left back for Italy in the tournament so far. His market value is 23.4 million mm. and his as well. His contract ends in 2024. And he seems one who can play at left back. He can play at left wing back as well. He seems a bit versatile in that in that kind of um, area. And he's right footed as well, I believe. Yeah, he can. He is right footed, but he can use his left as well. He's been definitely be going on the outside a lot during these uh, Euros, and he's definitely been one impressing for Italy so far. But might be difficult to prize him away from Jose Mourinho. Yeah, Roma. I think Jose will be looking at the Euros and licking his lips, <laughs> uh, seeing Spinazzola at the moment. I was getting quite excited when we were about to get Fonseca. I thought maybe he could do a deal for. Some some of these Roma players, um, seeing as Fonseca was massive in in kind of bringing him through the ranks at uh, Roma, uh, Spinazzola, because he was an unused player really before Fonseca. Mm. So um, I think Fonseca really, really brought him on. But 
not to be, is it? Not to no. be. Um, but at 23 and a half million, but with Jose as the manager there, I can't mm-hmm. see anything doing there, to be honest. I'd like to get him in, but yeah, as I said, it's going to be difficult to prize him away. And the next one we're going to be talking about is that name that never goes away in a Marcel Sabitzer. Market value, 37.8 million. A very versatile centre mid from mm. RB Leipzig uh, with one year left in his contract. But, I mean, I would have said halfway through last season that this one is going to be definitely be a goer. But I don't know if he would want to come to Spurs in the current state right now. Yeah, right now we're a bit of a mess. So whether he sees Spurs as an attractive option remains to be seen. I, he's one of those where I can't see him like, joining like, when we don't have a manager or anything like that. But he's definitely been uh, his versatility has definitely been used in this uh, tournament for Austria. He's uh, played centre mid, he's played on the, wi- on the wing, he's played up front. Um, he wears the number nine shirt for Austria as well. So that shows what, uh, the offensive responsibility I think he has for his national side. And um, I think he was really great in his first game against Macedonia, one of the assists of the tournament he, uh, he had. Since then, he was kind of... Uh, um, not impressed really in the second game uh, against Holland he was kind of anonymous and then the third game against um, Ukraine he was part of a very strong team performance him individually maybe didn't do that much but uh, as part of a team I thought they were really strong and mm. um, deservedly won that game so he's definitely he hasn't been like unreal but he's had a solid tournament so far yeah and they're talking about his value being about 15 to 20 million as well like yeah. mar- um because of the contract definitely so um it's definitely a goer um it will take some convincing I believe to get him through the door though mm. uh, next one we're going to be talking about is Manuel Locatelli of Sassuolo centre midfielder 31 and a half million market value um, contract ends in 2023 uh, two years left but he is being touted for like Juventus now I thought I saw some links to Juventus yesterday what did Alisson Gold said he said now Paratici is through the door he expects us to be uh, linked with every single Serie A player who's kicked the ball this season that's what he even said but um, it was no surprise that as soon as he got that brace against Switzerland immediately he starts getting linked with Tottenham yeah. um, so no what surprise a goal, the there one. yeah um, he's a defensive midfielder he actually used to play for AC Milan he came through the ranks there and then no he was on loan at AC Milan I believe I think he played there I think you on loan at Sassuolo and then signed permanently for Sassuolo. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that could be the case. I'm pretty sure that was that was the case. Um, I'm pretty sure he came through the ranks at AC Milan, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he, um, he, I think he played three seasons there, uh, was kind of in and out of the team, and then went on loan to Sassuolo, now mm, permanently right, at yeah. Sassuolo. Um, and he's really uh, made a name for himself there. And um, obviously he's broke into the international side, keeping, you've got to think of the likes of, who are not playing, you know, Verratti playing into Wales because he's not playing regularly at the moment. Um, like if he's keeping people like him out of the side, it shows the quality he has and how highly rated he is by Mancini. So um, he's definitely one to be considered in central midfield for sure. Yeah, I thought Verratti came in uh, to the tournament with an injury. Um, I thought that's why he wasn't playing, but I could be wrong there. Um, but Locatelli has definitely caught the eye of everyone, to be honest, during this tournament. He's been yeah. brilliant in that sentiment for uh, Italy. Uh, but let's move on. Alexander Isaac of Sweden and Real Sociedad, a market value of £36 million. And he really caught the eye of everyone in that opening Sweden game, did he? With his, He's a very tricky customer with quick mm. feet. Uh, but, you know, he's got a lot of pace about him. He can beat a man, that's for sure. Um, and I really like the look of him so far in this, in this tournament. Yeah, he's he's uh, looked like a real player who's going to be a big player in the future. Hasn't got off the score sheet yet, unfortunately for him, not for the one of trying. But um, with Sweden well positioned in the group to go through, there'll be more opportunities, I feel, uh, for him to prove his worth. And I think he's looked uh, like a real gem at the moment. Like, there were some moments against Spain where they he had three or four men inside the box around him and he just somehow managed yeah. to wriggle away and dig out a cross or a shot. And it was very, Marcus very impressive. Marcus just couldn't finish it off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you got to think as well, again, with Sweden, he may, maybe doesn't have the best of, uh, you know, Sebastian Larsson still playing on the right wing for them. So they've still he's still got those kind of players to contend with but if if Spurs were to sign him I feel like he could be uh, at 21 years of age he's only going to improve as well this guy's got real talent in his boots he's quick he's physical um, he's got he also showed his goal scoring prowess last season for Sociedad 17 league goals so he's definitely one who's going to be a hot property over the summer I think yeah and it's also worth noting his contract does um, have a quite a few years on it at 2024 it runs out um, but let's move over to Matthias Ginter of Gladbach 
uh, centre back, obviously uh, played for Germany, and he's really been impressive so far. Market value of 27 million with only one year left in his contract. This one could really be a viable option for Tottenham. Yeah, and he's been fantastic for Germany. Even that back three on the right side. Um, he even not only is he playing on the right side of back three, but it seems like when Germany on the ball, Kimmich. Um, in his right wing back position moves over further forward then Ginter kind of fills in at right back so he's kind of showing how versatile he can be in that position as well and I think on the ball he's been really strong they've been hard to break down and um, I know they obviously can see they see the own goal against France and can see a couple of goals from set pieces against um, Portugal but by and large he's been really really solid and um, he's impressed uh, next to Hummels and Rudiger. Yeah, I mean, he's one who I'll definitely look to get get through the door with. Only one year left in his contract. Mm. But I feel after this tournament, he could have quite a few suitors. How old is he, um, getting to About 27, I believe. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Been um, around for a bit now, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But let's move on to his teammate for Gladbach in Briel Mbolo of Switzerland. Market value, 14.5 million. Um, he has got... How long, he's got... A few years left in his contract, 2023 it runs out. I mean, he's been around he's been around the block for for quite some time. I think that he has looked good in this tournament, but I think in the pre-tournament you probably wouldn't have earmarked him as a transfer. I th- yeah, because he's kind of been in and out of the Gladbach side, hasn't he? Yeah. And, um, you know, p- a player and Turam kind of uh, usually get the nod ahead of him. But um, against Wales, like, Roden couldn't deal with him against Wales. And he was uh, unlucky not and to Roden's get... And Roden's had a really good tournament. Yeah, and he was unlucky not to get, like, a couple of goals. He got one goal, but they should, he could even have two or three. And um, he was absolutely electric. And uh, he's another one who, last tournament, he, he had a fairly strong showing and got, I think, a move to Schalke off the back of it. This too, he seems to t- turn up in the tournaments again, and um, he's been uh, playing up front with um, Seferovic for Switzerland, and he's been a bit, a bit of a handful. So he's one maybe to look at. I mean, he's he he kind of hits me as like a tournament player, and like mm. if we were to sign him, we might be very frustrated with him. Yeah, definitely, definitely. No, Tottenham. So we would see, we'd uh, he would sign for Spurs, and then all of a sudden, his the biggest frustrations would come yeah. out of him. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move over. This is this next one is a top top player in Denzel Dumfries of PSV, yeah. right back, and obviously we're very much looking for a right back at the moment. Market value fourteen point four million. Contract ends in twenty twenty three. Um, he's big. He's strong. He's fast. I mean, he arrives late in the box. He scores. He gets assists. I mean, this guy as a right back has it all. To be honest, he has it all. Um, I think all the top clubs in Europe will be after him this summer I think Tottenham will do amazingly if we can get him through the door yeah definitely he came into this uh, tournament with a bit of a reputation being with attacking fullback and with Holland playing their back free system it really has given him license to really go full throttle at the opposition and um, and it's definitely paid off scoring a couple of goals already and um, he's been absolutely phenomenal to watch he's been so hard to stop and he's been one of the stars of, of the, one of the fullbacks of the tournament at the moment for Holland and and, um, and he's been uh, absolutely brilliant and at the moment it looks like the way things are going um there'll be bigger eyes on him than just Tottenham now unfortunately I think we could have got him probably earlier in the summer or even last summer but now with the with the tournament and how he's having it's going to be very very difficult to uh be in front of the queue yeah who is it Juventus are very heavily linked Bayern Munich Bayern Munich that's Bayern it Munich are very Bayern Munich linked. imagine those fullbacks at Bayern Munich Dumfries and uh and what's his name uh, Davis, uh, yeah, Alfonso Davis. Imagine that, incredible, bloody incredible, hell. and uh, yeah, he looks like a real gem. And at PSV, he's not going to be at PSV. I guarantee you, at the end of the summer, he will not yeah. be at PSV. I agree. Um, moving on to Mikel Damsgaard mm. um, of Sampdoria. He's a left winger, but he can, he can be quite versatile, playing in a number ten, playing a bit deeper in a CM. Um, so this guy is definitely one who's caught my eye in this tournament. Um, he came on in in Denmark's second game. I can't remember who it was against. And he really put himself Belgium. about a very tricky customer. Um, he was he can beat a man. I mean, he looks really, really tricky on the ball. And then he started the last game and he was sensational, scoring a brilliant goal. Did he goal. come on against Bell? I thought he started. Did he not come on? Oh, I thought maybe he came maybe, on. Maybe he came on. But he definitely played. Yeah, he played really well. I remember it was really, really tricky. He seems to have stepped up um, in for the in creativity in um, Ericsson's absence. And um, he seems to uh, to one of the ones who, uh, I don't want to say benefited, but he's really shone since Ericsson's uh, been outside and he's uh, um, 
he came into this tournament with a couple of links to Spurs, and now those links are going to grow. And he scored an absolute screamer against um, Russia in the last game. What a goal that was! But it's not just that goal; it's just his uh, dribbling ability. He seems to it seems very very hard to get the ball. He always seems to have time and space on the ball when he has it as well, and he seems to have an eye for a pass. So, at 20 years of age, he seems to be a player who's going to grow and grow, and, and he's definitely a player people watch out for in the summer, having played for Sampdoria. Yeah, and his contract ends in 2024 as well. Um, let's move on to Robin Gozens of Atalanta. He's playing left wing back for Germany. Mm. Um, he's been absolutely brilliant so far. He's been so creative on that left-hand side of the flank. Uh, 31.5 million is his market value. Um, and I think we could potentially prize him away from um, Atalanta, but we do have Sergio Reglon as well. Yeah, but he was so dominant against... Um Portugal in their last game. What a performance that was! And one one of the best fullback performances I've, I've seen. I think he was he was involved in three goals and then got a goal himself for the fourth goal. He was dominant on the left hand side. They didn't know what to do with him. He every time they got the ball, he was going to the outside and the inside, getting crosses in. Semedo was probably dizzy after that game, not knowing what to do with Gosens. Um, it was it was an incredible showing, and uh, he was also very strong in getting the first game as well against France. And unfortunate to be on the losing side, but um, he's been one of the standout performers of the tournament for Germany um, so far and um, probably one of their lesser known players going into it and he's definitely going to be known to a lot of people now. That's that's definitely true um, yeah so there you have it that is our 11 targets that we have earmarked uh, for a potential move to Tottenham this summer. Let me know in the comment section below if you have anyone else that we haven't mentioned today in the comment section below. Just a recap of who we've mentioned. That's Manuel Locatelli Denzel Dumfries, Leonardo Spinazzola, uh, Mikel Damsgaard, Alexander Isaac, Roman Yeremchuk, Briel Mbolo, Matthias Ginter, Domenico Baradi, Marcelo Sabitzer and Robin Gozens. Let me know in the comment section below if you think there is anyone that we have missed out, but those are our 11 players that we could potentially sign this summer. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on England. Spurs. Oh, come on, you Spurs. <laughs> <laughs>